couple of sayings quoted everywhere these days. The first is, we live in interesting times. We certainly do live in interesting times, perhaps. A little too interesting, but with the worst economic crisis the world has experienced in many generations. But the other saying we hear from time to time, we're very in some, and I think as a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. For Canada, the crisis does represent an extraordinary opportunity to invest in today's needs and in the process to prepare our country for renewed growth and greater prosperity when the recovery comes, as it inevitably will. The product of the economic and the government has been adapted to the direct profit of this crisis. En particulier, notre plan prévoit des mesures à court terme pour faire des investissements à long terme. Des investissements en éducation et en recherche dans des secteurs traditionnels et de pointe et bien sûr des investissements importants en infrastructure, de la rénovation domiciliaire de la plus mineure aux projets nationaux majeurs. L'annonce d'aujourd'hui est un exemple de l'utilisation des besoins à court terme pour atteindre des objectifs à long terme. Our government's economic action plan has been adapted to take advantage of the crisis, in particular, by using short-term actions to make long-term investments in everything from education and research to strategies in traditional and cutting-edge sectors and, of course, to infrastructure, from the smallest household renovation, renovations to major national projects. Today's announcement is an example of using short-term needs to address long-term goals. Southern Ontario and the GTA have been hit hard by the slowdown, but it is still a bastion of our national economy and still remains so when the recovery takes hold. That's why it is critical to keep the economy of this region thriving, to keep people working, and to keep them moving. Every day, over 200,000 commuters rely on the GO Transit system to get to work and to get home to their families. The system is essential to the economy and to the people who depend on it. Je plaisais d'annoncer aujourd'hui que notre gouvernement agit en partenariat avec le gouvernement de l'Ontario afin d'améliorer et de revitaliser l'infrastructure de GO Transit. So today I'm pleased to announce that our government is acting in partnership with the government of Ontario to upgrade and revitalize GO Transit infrastructure. More than a dozen separate projects will be covered under this initiative. They will provide jobs for construction workers throughout the region, and they will help the GO system handle the huge increases in ridership that are projected throughout the Golden Horseshoe during the next decade. I'll leave the details to Premier McGinty, but I want to make it clear that today's announcement is not just about the GO system upgrades or the jobs that go with it. It is about where we are headed as a country. Alors que l'on combat les effets de la récession mondiale, nous, les Canadiens, regardons vers l'avenir. Au cours des prochaines semaines, notre gouvernement va annoncer d'autres initiatives prévu dans notre plan d'action économique, visant toutes à créer des emplois et à stimuler l'activité économique dans les communautés appropriées. As the world struggles with the effects of the global recession, we as Canadians are looking ahead. In the weeks to come, our government will be announcing more initiatives under our economic action plan, all designed to create jobs and boost economic activity in communities across the country. By looking forward today and investing in key infrastructure like public transit, our government is seizing the opportunities that will get us through these tough times and ensure Canada emerges stronger than ever. That's what we thank you, and I will turn it over to Premier McGinty to give us some more details. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, Prime Minister, growing up, my parents had their own take on mass transit. In a devout Catholic family of 12, mass transit meant walking to church on Sundays. Just the way we could all fit into the car. 
I want to thank everybody who's here today from Go Transit. Thanks for helping so many people get to where they need to be. As the Prime Minister mentioned, they're moving 210,000 riders every day. That's about 54 million every year. That is truly a remarkable accomplishment. Le réseau Go est un service essentiel pour nos familles et notre économie. C'est pourquoi le gouvernement fédéral et provincial travaillent ensemble pour le renforcer. Go Transit is a vital service for our families and our economy, which is why the federal and provincial governments are working together to strengthen it. I want to thank Prime Minister Harper for joining me here today to announce $500 million in service improvements for Go. As a first step, we want to make sure that more people have a place to park their car when they take the train. More and more people are choosing transit every year, and parking space needs to keep up with that rising demand. So part of this investment will support improvements in service for go riders by expanding parking service at 12 go stations, from Mississauga to Markham to Pickering. We're also making a few priority investments. For example, Hamilton Go users are, all, are going to see a real difference in service with $75 million for rail upgrades at the Hamilton Junction, which is a major source of congestion at present. And across the board, we're investing another $251 million to improve services to ensure even more Ontarians get on the go. And that's particularly important right now. With better service, people can pursue new job opportunities or training opportunities because they have a transit connection that gets them in. After work, parents can get in the door a little earlier so they can help with homework. Before work, they can leave a little later so they can serve their kids a good breakfast. And when transit is more convenient, more people leave their car at home. And that means cleaner air and a healthier environment for all of us. And we have the in the hospital on Canada. Improving the transit gives us an edge, and we all know that's something we need right now. Our government's highest priority is to help Ontarians through this recession and build a stronger, more competitive economy. We have to grapple with the present and build for the future. These projects will create jobs and help boost the economy in the near term and give us an even bigger boost in the longer term. We're working to make Ontario a place where gridlock doesn't hold you back and where mass transit makes more things possible so that our children and the generations that follow will work in an economy that's more creative and dynamic than we've ever seen, explore opportunities we have yet to imagine, and have a better quality of life than ever before. Thank you very much. GM and uh, the other auto companies are uh, coming up with their restructuring plans. If they come to you and ask for more money, are you prepared to uh, make them demands? Well, first of all, uh, let me just say we are anticipating that uh, there would be uh, greater loans involved in a longer term restructuring. As you know, uh, Premier McGinty and I uh, made our announcement in December that was for a short-term financing package to deal with immediate cash concerns. In fact, uh, I believe General Motors didn't actually avail itself at the end of that, but did indicate to us that we'll be looking for money as part of a long-term restructuring package. But obviously, uh, both of our governments, in collaboration with uh, our partners in the United States, will be taking a very careful look at these uh, restructuring plans before making final commitments. Uh, we, uh, we obviously want to be helpful. We want to make sure we maintain a strong auto industry, but uh, we're going to look over everything very, very carefully. So, Alton Eric, uh,
pourcentage entre 20 et 30 d'industrie pour, pour euh, assurer euh, la présence et l'avenir de cette industrie, une industrie forte au Canada. Évidemment, c'est une, euh, une situation très complexe. Euh, nous avons dans le budget des mesures, pas seulement pour aider l'industrie d'automobile, mais pour stimuler l'activité économique en général qui est essentielle pour, euh, pour la relance de cette industrie. Alors, euh, nous avons des, des, des politiques euh, générales, mais aussi nous avons une euh, discussion avec euh, les compagnies pour euh, déterminer d'autres semaines, d'autres semaines, pour la restructuration euh, plus générale. Prime Minister, it appears that one of the options for GM is declaring bankruptcy. I wonder what you think the implications would be that for the Canadian industry. I wonder if there's a concern on your part that given that and given their decision to not take any of the loan money so far, whether there's a fear they're going to pull out of Canada entirely. And related to that, Mr. Obama's press secretary made comments yesterday about supporting the American auto industry, cars for Americans. Is there a concern that there might be, in effect, a buy American uh, uh, element to any auto bailout that uh, the president's going to come up with? First of all, no, I'm not concerned about General Motors uh, moving out of Canada. We've had good disruptive discussions with the company. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, there's a range of options, and the restructuring itself will be extremely complex. But I'm confident that uh, with Canada, with the partnership with Ontario coming to the table with our share, of, uh, funding that we will maintain uh, a strong industry in this country. That's not to say, uh, you know, we have to be frank here, not to say there will not be job losses because we know uh, there are some very tough decisions to be made, but I'm confident with our participation in uh, the restructuring that we will maintain our share of this industry uh, in North America. I don't interpret uh, the comments of the Americans uh, uh, as protectionists. I think they're simply asserting what uh, we are also asserting is that we're involved in this to ensure that we maintain a strong automobile industry in this country, a strong employment in this country, a strong parts sector in this country, a strong dealerships in this country, and uh, ultimately we're doing that in, a, we're doing that, uh, in an industry that is fully integrated on a common basis. Prime Minister, with uh, President Obama signed his country's fiscal stimulus package today in Denver, what are the remaining issues Canada still has with that package in regarding to protectionism and at the state municipal level that you'll be raising with the President during his visit on Thursday? Well, there were significant changes to the Buy American provisions during the uh, congressional process, essentially uh, uh, an amendment asserting that the U.S. will respect all of its international obligations and the implementation of those provisions and obviously uh, as we work with the administration uh, we will be watching the implementation very closely to ensure that that is in fact the case. Now you should know uh, that subnational procurement, not just for the United States, but subnational procurement from Canada is largely a 
omitted from these trade obligations. So that's not just the case in the United States, it's the case in Canada as well. Um, you know, as uh, I've said in the past, uh, we expect the United States to respect its obligations as will we. Uh, but obviously we think it's very important for governments wherever possible to signal that they will move in the direction of opening up trade rather than in the direction of protectionism. For example, in the uh, budget we just tabled, um, we have provisions to remove uh, duties on imported machinery and equipment to Canada because we believe that's a good measure of open trade and frankly will benefit uh, not just the importers but will benefit the Canadian economy as well. So uh, we're going to do everything we can to continue uh, to push the United States and others in the direction of maintaining or expanding open trade. And you know the statements of the President and his administration on these matters have been very encouraging. And one last question, can you name me from Reuters? Hi, good morning. Um, the G7 finance minister just said a severe downturn is um, expected to persist through most of 2009. Do you see any possibility of a recovery in the second half of the year in Canada, or will things deteriorate most of this year? Look, uh, we're, uh, we're in an environment where it is extremely difficult to make. We have been, as I think I told you before, consulting economic forecasters monthly. Those forecasts have changed monthly, changed dramatically monthly, and we have never seen such a range of forecasts from the various uh, from the various uh, economists that we've been consulting. The truth is, we don't know. The budget that we table, uh, the economic action plan, the size of it, uh, the size of the stimulus measures we're undertaking are based on an assumption, to be frank, that the economy will get worse during 2009. We are not, you know, going into deficit $34 billion this year because we think the economy is going to stay just the way it is. We're doing that on the, uh, on the anticipation that we're going to face continued challenge in economic news this year. Um, beyond that, I won't speculate other than to say what I've said before, is that Canada remains, relative terms, very well positioned. Uh, we have a strong financial sector. We do not have the financial sector problems that are at the root of this recession in most major countries. Our housing sector, although it is slow, does not have the structural problems that they have in the United States. Our governments, although we are all uh, going into short-term deficits, have strong long-term balance sheets. Our debt GDP ratios are the lowest in the G7. They are going to being the lowest in the G7 by a long shot. Um, so we have a, we have a you know, strong, educated, adaptable workforce. Ontario, ourselves, other provinces are using our balance sheets. We're using the opportunities we have there right now with a slowing economy, with low interest rates, the borrow money to make long-term investments that are going to make uh, that are going to make us very strong when the recovery takes hold. So look, I expect a tough year. But uh, I think uh, we will come out of this in due course. We will come out of it in a very strong relative position. Um, other countries will be, even after this recession, will be struggling with some of the financial impacts of this for years to come. Uh, we will come out of this in a very good position if we, if we spend this money right, as the Premier and I are doing today. Thank you very much, everybody. That's it. You okay for please? Yeah. Just curious, uh, how bad, how bad that we think we're going to be? Well, you know, I've said for some time that there'll be significant deficit. We the details to the uh, Minister of Finance, but it'll be uh, significant because uh, we want to participate in a global, concerted effort to stimulate the economy. Uh, it's going to be uh, a deficit as well because our revenue base is, is shrinking. And we anticipate that the rate of recovery from this particular recession will be slower than those that we've experienced in the past. Well, for all the right reasons, we, we will we run a significant deficit. Premier, the, 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 Premier, the Prime Minister says that... That's Prime Minister, thank you. The Prime Minister says that Canada is in good position to come out of this. You have talked about issues, structural issues with the economy of Ontario. Does he understand, do you think, what's going on in Ontario and has he done enough? Yeah, I think that... Uh, the Prime Minister has demonstrated uh, through this recent budget in particular that um, he has 
it's a real sensitivity to some of the challenges that we're experiencing here in Ontario. You know, we're going to point to this kind of investment that we're making together today or to the new uh, Regional Economic Development Fund that will stand to benefit uh, uh, Ontarians living in southern Ontario. The fact that we're now going to get the same amount of money for our health care as they get in other parts of the country. There are some outstanding continuing issues, whether those deal with employment insurance, for example, or others, where we'll have to continue to find work until we find common ground. Do you Premier, find Premier, Premier, Premier why? Your Premier relationship has changed significantly with the Prime Minister's office since the election, and why do you attribute that? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, one, one of the reasons the Prime Minister is so determined to uh, to better understand Ontario is because uh, we remain the economic engine of this country. Forty percent of the national wealth comes from here. Last year we sent $23.5 billion to Ottawa for distribution in the rest of the country, notwithstanding our economic challenges. So uh, it's, it's in Canada's interest uh, that Ontario emerges from this strong. Premier, why should, why should anybody be excited about $500 million for parking lots? Well, it's one of a series of, uh, of announcements, and it's actually, practically speaking, it's really important. Uh, I think we're going to build about 6,800 new parking spaces. Uh, ridership keeps increasing on an annual basis uh, when it comes to GO trains in particular, and so it's, it's a practical thing, and uh, moms and dads uh, have been telling us for some time, you've got to build more of those darn spaces for us so we can leave our car there and use it. <laughs> well, your wish list is calling for electric trains and other investments there. Are you going to see money to help out with the electrification of the Well, that, that's, that's the, you know, there's continuing discussions uh, with the federal government. You know, they've got an infrastructure spend that they want to make. We've got our own priorities here, and we're looking to see if there's as much overlap as possible so that we're building on common ground, so to speak. Well, this, you know, urgency is important, and getting it right is also important. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, um, uh, you know, there's so many pieces that, are, that remain in motion. Uh, with respect to the global economy, um, how that's impacting on us here in Canada and in Ontario. So for us to take a few more days to better understand the world that we're going into, I think is the right thing to do. Ceux et celles qui sont experts dans ce domaine, qui comprennent ce qui se passe dans l'économie, sont en train de changer leurs idées, leurs opinions, leurs conseils de jour en jour. Alors, nous allons prendre tout le temps nécessaire pour en profiter des nouveaux conseils, pour qu'on puisse mieux comprendre ce qui va arriver dans l'économie, pour qu'on puisse rédiger un budget qui méritera la confiance des Ontariens et des Ontariens. Premier General Motors. C'est important de créer des, des espaces pour euh, le stationnement parce que nous avons plusieurs euh, Ontariens et Ontariennes qui, qui ne sont pas capables maintenant de, 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 de servir de, du go euh, sans avoir un espace. C'est une affaire euh, très pratique. Well, I, I think Ontarians are coming to understand that we're talking about a highly integrated North American industry. Uh, and uh, what the Prime Minister and I have committed to doing is everything that we can to maintain our share uh, of, of the auto business here in Ontario. So I, I'm not going to speculate on what's going to happen in, in Washington. Uh, I do know they're going to put, uh, submit their plans today. Uh, those plans will be made public. We're anticipating getting our own plans by the end of this week. Those plans will also be made public for Ontarians and Canadians to take a look at. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it's just to repeat something else as well. Just as taxpayers are prepared to come to the table, we expect that all the players in the auto sector will come to the table as well, understanding that the stake, you know, what's at stake here is the future of the sector. Uh, there will be more restructuring. I've said before I wouldn't be surprised if we had more job losses in Ontario. I think even folks who work in the sector understand that. What we want to get to is, um, is, is, is a solid foundation on which we can build on a go-forward basis. So, Premier, Premier United... what does this have to do with delays on go? Because that's what we hear from people is the big problem. That people are delayed and that's why they don't take those. So, why does there not have parking spaces rather than that? Well, to get, to get folks on the train, and, and there's more work to be done with respect to enhancing the, the you know, service quality. I think that, objectively speaking, uh, we've made great progress in that regard, but there's certainly more to be done there. $250 million 
that was announced today was not um, allocated specifically, but when we speak to that in the coming weeks, uh, I think you'll see this speak more directly to uh, uh, service improvements that will speak to delay issues. The overall rules are a little bit ill at ease. Thanks, folks. failure rate. I know people have their complaints in some places about go, but it doesn't work that way. And so, uh, you know, we hope that uh, this is uh, the train to Damascus, the road to Damascus, whatever it takes to make Mr. Harper work with Mr. McGinty, get things done for the people of Ontario and in the other provinces, but we're still really feeling we have to hold their feet to the fire to get real results for Canadians no matter where they are. Mr. Oui, je pense que c'est possible de sauver euh, euh, un pourcentage de l'emploi. C'est difficile parce que le marché euh, euh, est réduit euh, environ 40%. Malheureusement, le gouvernement du Canada n'agit pas euh, il y a euh, deux mois après le, le signal de la, de la crise. Et seulement après une visite de M. McGuinty, de la Premier ministre, on a... Est-ce est que euh, 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 trop tard, c'est difficile à dire. C'est très, très important. Je pense que le, le, la plupart des de Ontariens ne connaissent pas, ne savent pas qu'il y a euh, 70% plus de dépendance dans, au, en, au Canada en comparaison de les États-Unis sur le secteur euh, d'automobilisme. C'est très, très important pour l'avenir, de pas, pas, non seulement la manufacturerie, mais pour le, certains types de technologies et comme ça. Et malheureusement, il y a, il y a, nous n'avons pas une stratégie nationale pour, le, pour ce secteur uh, si important. Well, I, I'm worried about the future. There's, the a, the there, there's a word out there that the federal government had to be drag kicking and screaming. They came late. Ontario, uh, you remember Minister Bryant had talked about an independent strategy getting in ahead of time. We're 70% more dependent on auto in Canada than the Americans are. That's how much more our economy relies on those jobs. We earn those jobs. So there is there is risk. Uh, I think people should keep in mind, though, that there's two kinds of bankruptcy. There's, a, there's an unstructured one, and then there's a very structured one. And under that scenario, uh, there could still be a GM here in Canada, there could still be a GM with plants and so on, uh, but that is at least one thing that you hear more and more about from the United States. And uh, what my worry is, is that the, uh, the developments in the States will set the agenda here in Canada in a way that perhaps they didn't need to uh, if we had a federal government with a strategy for the honorable sector in the first place. Is there 